Another example, and there's many examples if you look at history and how Muslims elevated the society. For example, you take astronomy. You know, the Muslims were some of the first people to, to create, uh, what do you call those, observatories. And part of this was because, you know, the moon, the lunar calendar, uh, the sun, the, like we calculate prayers by looking at the sun. We're always looking for the, moon, the new moon. So a whole science came out of, you know, worshiping them, worshiping a lot, trying to figure out, you know, the month of Ramadan. And a lot of it came from, for example, the ayah of the Quran, Allah says, the heavens and the earth were ordered rightly and were made subservient to men, including the sun, the moon, and the stars, and day and night. Every heavenly body moves in orbit assigned to it by God and never digresses, making the universe orderly, an orderly cosmos whose life and existence and expansion are totally determined by the Creator. So in other words, from these eyes in the Quran, from the injunctions of practicing Islam, the Muslims made the society better. Also, in the Quran, Allah encourages us, you know, to constantly to have faith and also to work, to build the society. So for example, Allah says, what also, Allah says, indeed, by the declining day, mankind is in loss. Except those who believe in Allah and do good deeds who are working. And they're patient upon uh, worshiping Allah and building the society. And there are numerous ayahs in the Quran where Allah constantly tells us, you know, to build, like to have faith and to build. And there are many ahadith, for example, oh, just going back to this ayah of uh, Surah Asr, you know, the scholars say that if there had been no other ayah or no other surah, he says this particular surah, it would have been sufficient for the creation. And part of that is because it has many lessons. It's a short ayah, but it has many lessons. So, for example, one, it calls us to believe in Allah, and second, it encourages us to work for the uplifting of ourselves, and third, being patient upon the path of Allah. So Allah says, What also in the insan and love, and puts indeed mankind is in loss, uh, in the, uh, except those who work and have faith in Allah, and they're patient upon that. And just to share some hadith from the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, in regards to you know, having concern for humanity and building humanity, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Allah said, none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. And in another narration, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he used this word, the jari, meaning neighbor. So in another narration, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, none of you truly believe until you love for your neighbor what you love for yourself. And there's different variations of this particular hadith. For example, the Prophet peace be upon him said that a Muslim is the one who uh, the people are safe from his harm. So this is the characteristic of a Muslim. And then again, the Prophet peace be upon him, he said, لا يبلغ العبد حقيقة الإيمان. He says, the servant of Allah does not reach the reality of true faith until he loves for the people what he loves for himself. So this is what it means to be Muslim, that we have a concern for the people and we're working towards the betterment, the betterment of society. And again, just to share uh, some more hadith from the Prophet Yisrael, he says, whoever believes in Allah in the last days should speak good things and keep silent. Whoever believes in Allah in the last days should be courteous and generous to his neighbor. Whoever believes in Allah in the last days should be courteous and generous to the traveler. And again, I just want to share uh, more hadith in regards to working, you know, for the concern and the, the betterment of, of humanity. The Prophet peace be upon him said, every small bone that everyone has upon it, a charitable act every day. So every day which the sun rises, bringing about justice between two people is an act of charity. Helping a man on his mount, lifting him onto it, or helping him put, in, put his belongings on it, this is an act of charity. A good word is a charitable act. Every step taken toward prayer is a charitable act. And removing a harmful thing from the path is also 
a charitable act. And one last hadith that I want to share, uh, well, there's two more. The Prophet peace be upon said, uh, oh, so he says, whoever, whoever of you sees an evil must then change it with his hand. And if he is not able to do so, then he must change it with his tongue. And if he's not able to do so, then he must change it with his heart. And this is the, the slightest or the weakest of faith. And we can take that in many ways. But in other words, this is our duty and our responsibility, you know, to facilitate Islam, to accommodate the people, and remove harm from the society. We don't necessarily have to go out and protest, but whatever means that Allah has given us, you know, I mean, whatever we do, we do it well. And let that be an example. And, you know, the next part of the football, I'll give more examples uh, in regards to, you know, Encouraging ourselves and, and building the society of Ulu Koli Hadha wa Astaghfirullah wa Rahim 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 Alhamdulillah wa Salatu wa Salam ala Rasulullah ala Fahim so, you know, when I was, you know, putting this together, I was trying to think of more examples of Muslims and how they contributed. And one of the things that came to my mind was Muhammad Ali, for example. And I remember, like, maybe three or four years ago, I had to go to Louisville for, uh, for a training. And one of the things that uh, the trainer said, they said whenever Muhammad Ali would come to the city, he said it was like a parade because he would run through the neighborhoods and he said all the kids would, uh, they would follow him. And you know, one of the things that I think is interesting, I found a quote that says, service to others is the rent you pay for the room, for your room here on earth. And this particular quote that said it was attributed to Muhammad Ali, but I thought that was very interesting. And if you look, you know, the core of what he did, like, you know, he stood up for what was right. And we see the benefit so much so that there is, I think there was a street like uh, that had his name, Muhammad Ali. You know, I mean, for example, you know, you can go to other cities where the Muslims are active and they may have streets named after them. For example, in uh, New Jersey, there was a, uh, I think East Orange, there was a Masajid. And on the corner it said Ahlul Sunnah, you know. So again, wherever the Muslims are, they develop and they bring up the society around them. And a good example in our time is Muhammad Ali. Um, the other thing that I think is significant is that sometimes we underestimate like small acts of kindness. You know, recently I was talking to somebody, and one of the things they said is that most people, when they come into a social service agency, people that are trying to help them are thinking of these big, like uh, big things they can do in order to help them. But most of the time, the people just want to eat. And so, for example, as Muslims, you know, we try to think of ways to help people, or we try to think of ways like how we can give dawah, or how can we articulate Islam to make the people accept the love. But if we do something simple like asking somebody, are they hungry? That may seem very small, but it could be, it could be very, very profound. And again, like in preparation, you know, there's a psychologist, uh, Maslow, you know, and he has these five hierarchy of needs. And the top one of the pyramid is self-actualization, wanting to feel empowered. And the lowest level is food, clothing, and shelter. So before we can do anything, we have to feed the people. However, how, however that looks like, whether it's feeding them, you know, uh, by actually giving them food, or, you know, just helping them in a way that literally or symbolically like feeds their soul. And again, in the Quran, this is a common theme, right? Uh, feeding the poor, taking care of the orphan. For example, Allah says, Why do ta'imu ta'ama ala hupihi masina wa yatima mu'asira? Allah says, and they give food, meaning the Muslims, and they give food in spite of their love for it, or for the love of him, to the miskin, to the poor, the orphan, and the captive. And then it goes on to say, And they say, 
We feed you only for the sake of Allah, and we wish not from you a reward or gratitude. Imagine that. That, you know, the Muslim, we give not because we want something from somebody, but we give strictly for the, the you know, the sake of Allah. And even like when I look at my own story and how I came to Islam, it wasn't what people told me, but it was how they treated me. Because whenever the Muslims told me about Allah, I thought, you know, literally, I thought they were crazy. But it was how they treat me. They literally, you know, said, man, you don't have to do these things. And they literally fed me. And at that period of my life, you know, anytime somebody's nice to you, it's like they want something. So to have somebody genuinely concerned for your well-being, for some people that's very, very profound. And so this is the way of the Muslim, that we can, that we we serve the people for the sake of Allah. And again, you know, Allah also calls us to account, for example, those of us who say we're religious, but we refuse to help the people. And if we refuse to help the poor and the orphans. And again, you know, working in an industry where we don't know when we come across a orphan. You know, because most of them are functioning in their day to day. They go to work, they go home, if they have a home. But Allah loves the orphans. And so, for example, in Surah Al Ma'un, Allah says, Allah says, Have you seen the one who denies the judgment or who denies the religion? And He says, For that is the one who drives away the orphan. And he does not encourage the feeding of the poor. And then Allah tells us, the Muslims, he says, for way do the Muslim. So woe to those who pray. So woe to those who pray. Those who are heedless of their prayer, and they only pray to be seen by the people. So in other words, you know, we're religious when we're with the people, but in our hearts, you know, we have no concern. And so Allah calls us to account for that. And in closing, uh, the Prophet peace be on him said in regards to, you know, just being concerned for the people, being concerned for the Muslim. You know, the Prophet peace be on him said, Allah will say on the day of judgment, O son of Adam, I was sick, but you did not visit me. And then the servant will say, you know, Ya Allah, O Allah, how could I visit you? when you are the Lord of the world. And, and, and Allah says, did you not know that one of my servants was sick and if you came to visit him, you would have found me with him. And then Allah goes on, he says, Ya Ibn Adam, O son of Adam, I needed food but you did not feed me. And then the servant will say, you know, Ya Allah, how can I feed you when you are the Lord of the worlds? And then, the, then Allah says, did you not know that, the one, that one of my servants was hungry, but you did not feed him? If you had fed him, you would have found me with him. And then he goes on to say, yeah, uh, Ibn Adam, O son of Adam, I was thirsty, but you did not give me something to drink. And again, the servant will say, you know, yeah, oh my Lord, how could I have how could I give you drink when you're Lord of the worlds? And again, Allah says, did you not know that one of my servants was thirsty, that you did not give him drink? If you had given him drink, you would have found, you would have found him with you. So these are just examples, you know. And I know there's a lot of debate about, you know, what it means to be Muslim, but it's very, very simple. Believing in Allah and working towards that and uplifting the society. And just closing again, Allah says, Kum tu khayra ukhla jazi nas, ta'ma guna bin ma'rufi wa tanhaunan amin munkari wa tuklimu billah. Allah says, you are the best nation raised up for humanity because you encourage the good and you forbid what is wrong and you believe in Allah. Inna Allah wa malari khata wa yusaluna ala nabi ya liha nabina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إلا تحمد المجيد والله بلس محمد إلى فامي محمد أجل بلس إبراهيم إلى فامي إبراهيم شو اللي يا فريس وارد من غوريس